Perfect. So any function, doesn't matter what it looks like, it could have been y equals x squared plus 2. It doesn't matter. The thing is, if you take an x, which is independent, and you plot it into the actual function, it's going to give you a very specific y. Okay, remember x and y are coordinates, do you agree? Okay, so the, the next bit on that page, just draw an x and a y axis like that. Okay, so x and y, like... That's the cross. Right? Yeah, the cross. Yeah, don't worry about the quadratic, we'll discuss it just now, but let's just draw... Um, you can use the whole page um, to do it, because you're going to put two graphs on it. Okay, so that's the Cartesian plane, and obviously you've got naught naught in the middle, and then you've got x's running along the horizontal, and then you've got y, which is the vertical. So label your axes. Where's x? Um, x is the bottom. Yes. And where's y? The top. Okay, so if I look at that equation y equals x plus 2, what can I do? I can put in any x and I'll get the very specific y. It's like, a, it's like an address, like that's a map. Okay, so like you use Google Maps to find an address. What do you need? You need the address, you need the suburb, you need everything. And then you'll be able to find it exactly on the map. Okay, so what do I need here? I need x and y. I need both. Okay, so if I've got the function y equals x plus 2. Okay, if x is 0, where is y? If x is 0, where is y 2? Yes, how did you get 2? Exactly. Okay, so what do you do? You take whatever x is, you put it into the equation, you get the specific y. Okay, because that x must go with that y. So what, what goes together? The 0 and the 2. Okay, the x and the y. Alright, so where would 0, 2 be on the graph? Good. So it'll be on the y-intercept. Do you To put little dots. Okay. How am I going to know another Oh, uh, we've just wrote down the equation. Now we're drawing the graph. Okay, so zero and two. two. So we're going to, yeah. yeah, so label it and then next to it put a bracket zero two. Zero comma two. Because that remember, that's a that's a what? That's a point. Okay, so points have two values. Okay, x and y. Right, what's the next point? You can choose any number. Three. Fine. So if we've got x as three, what would y be? Five. Okay, so where would x3, y5 be? x3, y5. Yeah, so maybe use a ruler and use like one centimeter as a... Right, so where would x3, y5 be? Okay, there's five. And three, where's three? x3, y5. Okay, so then dot there, brackets. Okay, so the purpose of a function is to give you a specific value, that's all. Right, then what function do you have there? A straight line. So take the ruler and connect the two dots and extend the line because a straight line can go forever. Right, you can have a hundred as x. And then what would y be? 100 plus 2. Yeah. Okay, which is 102. Two. Okay, so um, extend it down to the bottom as well. So it extends forward and backwards. Okay, so these are basics. These are basic, basic, basic principles looking at a function. All right, so a function is just a formula, basically. It's, it's giving you a value after having put something into it. It's like a recipe for something. The recipe here says x plus 2. That's going to give me the y. Right, so if I follow the recipe, I'm going to get the x's and y's. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's label a few other important points on the actual graph. Right, so you need to highlight the x-intercept and the y-intercept for that graph. Where would those things be? Okay, what would that one be? X and y. No, you can't have an x and a y-intercept. It's one or the other. Y is at the y-intercept. Good. So label that point y-intercept. Okay, so things like the uh, points like those are important because without knowing those points, I can't actually draw the graph. 
Okay, so now you know that that's the y intercept. Where's the x intercept? There is no x intercept. Yes, there is. What is an x intercept? On the x, oh, so yeah. Yes. Okay, so wherever the graph cuts the x axis will give you the x intercepts. How do I find the x intercepts if I wanted to find it? I don't have it. Can I get it? I don't know how you can. Okay, so uh, remember we said x intercepts can be found when y is? Zero. Zero. And we said y intercepts can be found when x is? Zero. Exactly. Okay, so if we had to make y zero, what would x be? So highlight x intercept in pink maybe. Okay, and then just next to it put a little side working or green, any color yeah. Okay, so you asked about how do we find the x-intercept. Okay, so basics. Um, we actually spoke about that in the quadratic function part is because uh, in the quadratic functions you're looking for those missing figures to complete the equation. Yeah, so how do we find x? Make y zero. Right, so um, next to the x-intercept, let's do the calculation. What are you going to write down? The function. What is the function? y equals x plus 2. So how are you going to get the y-intercept? The x-intercept. Make y 0. Okay, so minus 2 equals x, or x equals minus 2, you can write it either or, but that's what the x-intercept is. So now can we label that point? Yeah. Okay, so let's label it. A bracket, it'll be minus 2, comma 0. <coughs> okay, because remember those are coordinates. Coordinates, minus 2, comma 0. All right, doesn't that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so a function is just that. It gives you values that you can then plot, and then you can draw a graph. Okay, the, the textbook says... The idea of a function um, is obviously something that you need to grasp, okay, from a theoretical point of view, because it doesn't matter what the graph looks like. It could have been a curve, it could have been a circle, it could have been anything. Okay, the straight line is the most basic func function that we've looked at before. Okay, if you look at the, that graph, um, do you have specific quadrants? Yeah. Yes, okay, so where is your first quadrant? <coughs> Yes, okay, so label that first quadrant that you can write big. That on like the top. anywhere, just as a label, yeah. First quadrant. Okay, where's the second quadrant? No. Second quadrant? There, yes. Okay. Quadrant two. Right, quadrant three. And then quadrant four. Okay, and why do we have those four quadrants? It's, bec it's because you have a 360 degree circle. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay, so we always start at zero where? Where does zero, zero degree start? Yeah. No, that's not zero degrees. That's 90 degrees. Mm, I don't know then. Zero degrees will be on the right. Okay. okay so yeah. yeah. So there you can put a little zero degrees, little zero degree sign. Okay. So now imagine you're lying <laughs> flat like that. Okay. So let's use this pen. Okay. This is zero degrees. Okay. This would be 90. 90. So label the top 90 degrees. Okay. So if you've gone from here to there, you've moved 90. And then if you go there, it's flat again. That's 180. Okay, and then if you add another 90, no, 270 first. Oh, yeah, I think 360. Yes. Okay. Right, so it's literally just taking something and rotating it 360 degrees. Right, so that's what they show you in the textbook here. See, quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. That's important probably for later on when you do some trig. Okay. All right. So that we've looked at that. Um, okay. Circle graphs and quadratic graphs. This you can write on a new page. All right. So you don't mess up that nice diagram.
Okay. Right, you can say, you can put a heading for this types of graphs. Okay, because you get lots of different types of graphs. You need to look at all of them. Okay. Okay, so in terms of types of graphs, the first type would be the straight line, which we've already looked at, so you don't have to redo anything there, um, but you can just mention it. Yeah, so types of graphs, number one, straight line. Okay, you've already drawn an example, you've looked at it, but it's just a function. Okay, the point of this exercise is just to explain that graphs are functions. Okay, number two. Quadratic function. Okay, so remember earlier we said um, functions give us a range of answers, do you agree? Mm -hmm. Because I can take whatever x I want to as long as it's on a number line. Okay, so I can take a negative x or a positive x or I can even take zero. It doesn't matter. And I can put that into a formula and that formula will give us a corresponding y that we can draw okay so here we can put a little, little example um, y equals we'll keep it simple we'll use this one then the one that's in the text or well, the work program y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3 okay, okay. if you look at how they've given it to you Okay, the, the way they've given it to you is just in function format. So instead of writing y, they just wrote f of x. f of x means it's the function of x. Okay, so whatever I put into x, I'm going to then work out the corresponding y. Okay, that's just the notation that's used to describe a function. Okay, a function has an x and a y value like what you've written there. Okay, so draw a little, t, uh, a little um, x and y again, same as before. Same as this one. Yeah, same, not as big, but. Yeah, exactly the same, okay. Uh, maybe, just give yourself more space, so put this line further down, okay, uh, like two lines on the bottom. Yeah, that's good, there. Okay. Just a small little sketch. Okay. okay, so can I work out the y-intercept? Do you still remember what the formula is for a quadratic function that we looked at yeah. in terms of the formula? Ax squared plus bx plus c. So next to that y equals, you can maybe put a nb. Quadratic yeah. functions have formulas. Um, so y equals ax squared. Ax squared? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus bx. Plus c. What's the y intercept? What do you uh, what value represents the y-intercept? Always. Zero. No. Um, C. Okay. Can you remember y equals mx plus C? When you had a straight line, mx plus C. Uh, maybe we can add that as well here. We didn't. Okay, so next to that highlighted yellow formula y equals x plus 2, just put what you just wrote down. y equals mx plus C. y equals mx plus C. Okay, that's the general equation. What does the C represent in that equation? Down. Yeah, you've seen that before, haven't you? I have. Yeah. I'm just okay. I haven't done that before. Yeah, no, I understand. I'm just saying that it's just something that we've seen. We just need to recap. Okay. Right, so C is always the one to step to agree. Okay. All right, so let's do that as well for the other one. Um, just highlight the C or circle the C and just write down Y to set. Okay, because now you know that the C is the intercept. Okay, and that's just a generic equation. 
but any quadratic equation will have that equation. All right, so do I know what the y-intercept is? Looking at the graph, the example graph. Minus three. Minus three. Okay, if I didn't know that, what could I have done to get it? How do I get a y-intercept? Make x zero. Exactly. So what is zero squared? Zero. zero. What is two times zero? Zero. zero. So now you've got zero plus zero minus three gives you? Three. Exactly. Okay, so on the graph, you're going to show minus three, which is yeah. that point here. You can just put a point there, and that would be the y-intercept. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can even label it y intercept. Okay, so there you go, you've got the y intercept. But remember, a graph needs more than one point in order to draw it, especially for quadratic. Quadratic means it's a smiley face or an unhappy face, depending. Okay, how do you know whether it's smiley or unhappy? Exactly, so the A value tells you this is positive or negative. Okay, so what is the A value in this equation? Um, one. one. Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. So would you expect the graph to be happy or sad? Okay. Happy. So it looks like that. Alright, so that's what the A represents. Okay. Right, the, the textbook also talks about like minimum and maximum values that would be like part of the range. Right, so we'll discuss it once we've drawn the little sketch. Okay, okay so we need the sketches. Right, so you've already got the y intercept. Let's see what we're going to need. Well, two other points. Um, so let's take any value on the left. Let's take an easy value. Let's use minus 1. Okay, so if I had minus 1 as an x value, can I get a y value? Yeah. Yes, okay, so let's just do that little working on the left. It's just underneath the word graph. Mm -hmm. um, you can just say if x equals minus 1. I'm just choosing minus 1. You can choose whatever number you want. I'm just getting other points I can sketch it. Okay, so minus 1. Right. Obviously, depending on what type of question you have, you would either have to use what they've given you in the question, or you'd have to create um, numbers that you can then apply. Okay. It all depends. All right, so let's put in minus 1. Put minus 1 into there. What's x squared? Well, it's minus 1 now, so minus 1 squared is? Yeah, open brackets. Yeah, close bracket squared. Minus 2 bracket minus 1. Minus 3, good. Okay, so minus times a minus is a? Positive. So 1 times 1 is? One, so that's the answer for that. One minus one squared. What's minus two times minus one? No, minus two. No, two. Okay, negative times a negative is a positive. Two times one is two. And then? Minus two. Okay. Negative is zero. Um, one plus two is two, minus two is zero. Yes. Okay, so where are you going to plot that? Minus 1 and 0. Okay, minus 1 and 0. No, minus 1 and 0. Okay, because what do we put in? Minus 1 and we got 0. Okay, minus 1, 0. Okay, so now where is that? Okay, so that's the point. You can label it. Okay, we can choose any other point. Let's just um, randomly choose a point. Let's say let's say x is three now. Okay, so if x equals three, what is the y? Do the exact same thing. Substitutes.
Which card is not? No, it's two times three is six. Minus three. Yes. Okay, so you've got another point. Right, so what's special about that point? Well, when I have a value of 3 for x, I get a value of 0 for y. So where is 3, 0 on the actual graph? So it's x3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, label it. Exactly. Okay. Right, so is it possible now to draw the graph? Yeah. Yes. Okay, obviously we haven't worked out the turning point, um, but the graph is a little bit off-center. You can see the graph is a bit off-center. So just, just like draw the point by joining those two dots. So you've drawn this dot and that dot. Mm -hmm. So just complete it. Just draw it. Okay. Right, so what is that representing? This. Yes, and that is a quadratic function. Mm -hmm. Okay, so quadratic functions are happy or sad faces, basically. Okay, you usually get other graphs that look like that. Okay, when you have different equations, functions. Okay, this is called a radical function. Um, you probably don't have to know what the, that, that's called. They, they won't ask you, is this a radical function or not? Yeah. Okay, but the thing is, the point is, you do the exact same thing. You take numbers, you plug it in, and you get a value. Okay, so, um, new page. You've labeled 1, straight line, 2, quadratic. You can label 3, radical. Okay, so number 3. It's just a different type of function, that's all. Okay, functions are y is equals x's plus, well, x's and get and, and, and y's, basically. Okay, so the example, you can write down um, with radical functions, the reason why it's called radical is because there are answers that are undefined. That's the key. Okay, so the, re the reason why this is a radical function, not a normal quadratic or straight line, it's because um, certain answers are undefined. Undefined meaning you cannot um, rationally write them down. Okay, so for example, can I square root a negative number? No, you can't. Okay, you cannot square root a negative number because um, two numbers that multiply that are multiplied together always give you a positive. Right, so negative times a negative is always a positive. I cannot break that rule. Okay, so it has undefined answers. It has some undefined answers. Not all, just some. Okay. Alright, so let's use the example, e.g. E.g. Y equals negative root x, negative, then a root, a root sign, yeah, root x, and then a separate, it's a outside yeah, root. it's outside, and then separate uh, minus 2, okay, right, so why is that radical? So well, is this the, the generic formula, or? No, it's not generic, it's just an example of a radical function. It could have been y equals minus x plus 10. It would have been a completely different graph, but still radical because you have a square root. Okay, so only because of the square root that makes it radical. And the reason for that is, can I have a square root of a negative number? No. Okay, so that's why when you have a sketch like this, okay, where does the graph start? At 0. Can you have x's that are negative? No, you can't. Why? Because you can't have a square root of a negative. Okay, so let's put that down. Let's write that down. Okay, so um, at the bottom, point number one, um, square root x, square root x will always be a positive number.
because we cannot square root a negative. That's why. Okay, so whatever we have, x must be positive. That's the big, big, big taking um, point to take away, um, because um, as we can't square root a negative number. So you can even show that you can say if if x equals minus one, what would y equal? You can say y equals um, negative square root minus one. Um, can you do a um, square root on your on your phone? Is it no, possible? I don't think so. You don't think so? Okay. Well, if you had to do a square root on the on, on of a negative one, you'll but see. That is minus and then minus one. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It could have been a minus outside or a plus outside. The, the number outside the square root is not important. The number inside the square root is important. Okay, so can I square root a negative number? No, you can't. Okay, if you put that into any calculator, irrespective of what type of calculator it is, you're going to get an error. Okay, so you can say that equals error. And that's obviously an undefined answer. Okay, you cannot define it because it's not a rational answer. Okay, right, and that's why I cannot have things on the left of this graph. Of this graph. No. Why not? Well, what are yeah? What are the numbers on the left of this graph in the book? Minus six. Exactly. So <laughs> all of these numbers on this side of the y axis will be negative x values. Do you agree? And all of those negative x values, when I plug it into the formula, will be a square root of a negative something. Okay, and for all of those answers, you're going to get a negative. negative, a zero, a, well, an undefined answer, exactly. Okay, right, and that's why the graph here is always on that side. Right, so how did they draw that graph? They just substituted values in. Okay, so you can just put a, a note at the bottom there. We don't have to draw this one, but I'm just showing you the graph because it's here already. You can just put a note. To draw this graph, we will still apply the same basics. Substitute x in, get points for y, and to draw, yeah, to draw the graph. Mm -hmm. Follow the same basics. Substitute x to get y. Substitute. X to get Y. And then once we've got X and Y, what do we do? We plot and draw. Okay, then you can say plot X and Y. Then plot X. Yeah, then plot X and Y. And join the dots or draw. Okay, and that's how they drew these graphs. Okay, so it's literally what? An exercise where you take x's and you substitute to get y's. Okay. I'm just going to draw this because I've never seen that before. Okay, well, remember, this is not the only graph that is a radical graph. It's just one example of a radical graph. Graphs can look very different. Okay, they're just graphs that have what? Undefined answers. Right, so the reason why this is a radical graph is because can I have things on the left of that y intercept? No. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay, so anything on the left is undefined, anything on the right is defined. So therefore, you can only draw the graph on the right, and you cannot draw the graph on the left. Okay. 
Okay. All right, new page. Um, I'm just going to discuss this because we've, we've actually spoken about domain before. It's recap. Okay, so you get two things, domain and you get range. What's the difference? Domain relates to what? Range relates range to what? Range is your y value. Yes, good. And x is your? Domain. Exactly. So you know that, that's great, but just let's just put a note about it. Okay, so I'm going to use this as a, as a discussion example. Okay, what is the domain for x in this graph? Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. It can be anything. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay, because this this graph goes on forever, and this graph goes down and smaller forever. Okay, what's the domain for this graph? No. no, no. The domain is minus two infinity. No, the domain. Um, the domain is the x value. So what x values can I have here? Zero to ten. Zero. Uh, can I? Do I stop at ten? No. No, exactly. So here, the domain would be starting at zero and positive infinity, whatever. It could be positive a thousand. It will still be on this graph, but it will be all the way like, like down, down, down. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Right, um, y-intercept. Uh, not y-intercept, range. The y-values. What is the range for this graph? Correct. Positive and negative infinity. Why? Because I'm looking at this axis. Okay, what is the range for this graph? Um, also. What is the range for that graph? Okay, so what is the range asking you for? Um, the, the possible y values. Mm -hmm. So what are the possible y values? Maybe minus, two. minus 2 and then? Bigger or smaller? Smaller. Okay, so what is exactly? Yeah. So this is the y values, and I can have all of those y values because the graph is sloping that way. Okay, so all of those are possible y values. That would be the range. Okay, and then x is obviously what that way. Okay, so x would be starting here at zero, and I can have anything in that future. Here, starting at minus 2, and I can have anything below that. Okay, so do you want to write a point about that? Yeah. Okay, so domain relates to x, range relates to y, and it's looking at all the possible answers of x and all the possible answers of y. That's what it's actually looking at. Possible answers. Yeah, domain relates to x, range relates to y. Right, next bit, let's see what else we need to look at. Um, okay, this is important in terms of quadratic functions. So in the textbook or in the work program here, they talk about this, a vertex. Okay, we've spoken about it before. It's not something that you've seen for the first time. Okay, what is that vertex? If you had to put that vertex on this diagram, where would it be? I'm not sure you mean Vertex is a turning point. Okay. Yeah, that's a vertex. All right, so let's make a note then. A vertex, but this only applies to a quadratic function though. So vertex, comma, only for quadratic functions, or you can say turning points for quadratic functions only. Okay, only for a quadratic function would you have a turning point. Right, so let's recap that. Um, how do you, do you remember how to find the vertex? 
Okay, so let's write it down. Um, let's write down the quadratic function first. So y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. What you wrote before. Exact same equation. Y equals... Yeah, so we're just discussing the vertex and we're recapping how to find it. Y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so how do I find the vertex? You use a formula. Right, so the formula for the vertex. The vertex is found using this equation. And then we'll write it down. Vertex is found using this equation. X equals minus B over 2A. Okay. Right, so I'm going to use this as an example to show how we get that point. Okay, so you can just put a reference here, so you can always go back and actually look at the diagram. We're not going to redraw the diagram, that's a waste of time. We're just going to apply the mathematics to get the vertex. Right, so just put a, a note for yourself. Um, see page 15, work program. Okay, just if you want to look at the picture. Okay, the picture's not important, it's getting the points. Right, that's what we need to try to, um, that's what we need to show here. Okay, but again, just to reference it so you can see the picture, and um, the picture helps with understanding. Okay. Alright, so how do I get the vertex? I need an equation. Here's the sample equation that they've used. So let's write that down. Y equals minus 3x squared plus 6x plus 1. Right, so what is that? That's a quadratic equation. Um, just tell me a bit about it. So looking at that equation, what can you tell me about the graph? There's two things that you can tell me about the graph just by looking at the equation. It's a quadratic and it's a negative quadratic. Uh, so negative quadratic means happy or sad? Sad. So does this picture look sad? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's sloping that way. All right, what else can you tell me just looking at that equation? The is minus, uh, oh, is plus one. That's correct. So there's plus one. See that? Mm -hmm. That's one. Right, so the, see, those are things you can literally just pull out of the um, formula. That's that's as simple as it is. Okay, you look at the equation, you take what's important. Right, but what do I want? I don't want the y-intercept. I don't want the shape of the graph. I want the vertex. Okay, so how do I get the vertex? I need to use that equation x equals minus b over 2a. Okay, so let's write that down. x equals minus b over 2a. Right, now we need to substitute. So what is B? Uh, oh, you wrote minus 2. Yeah, okay. Do you have to fix? If you just cross it out, it's fine. Okay, do you have a um, B value in the equation? Yes. Yeah. Do we have an A value in the equation? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So what is B and what is A? So B. Minus open bracket, what is B? Good over 2 minus 3. Good. Okay. Uh, just put that 6 in a bracket because if it was a negative, it would have a negative 6. Yeah, so I'm just substituting in. Right, so what's the answer? Mm -hmm. So um, that's minus 6 as well. I don't know what the so that's also minus 6. Yeah, so simplify. So the next line, okay. minus 6 over minus 6. What is minus 6 over minus 6? One. Exactly. Okay. So what is the x value of the vertex? One. Yes. Okay. So we, we still need the y though. How do I get the y? Okay. How do I get the y? No. I have a specific x. How do I get a y? Exactly. Okay, so now we would take the 1 and you would put it back into which equation? That's 1. Good. So show that substitution to get the y. But here we were just showing how to get the turning point. Uh, the turning point has two values. Remember, it's an address. An address has an x value and a y value because that's where we put the points. Right, why? Because it's on a graph, it's on a Cartesian plane. Cartesian planes have x's and y's. 
Okay, because now I know what the x is, it's 1. But now, remember, if x is 1, that's it there. Do you agree? But now, where is it? Is it down at the bottom? Is it at the top? Where is it? Okay, so then... Um, Substitute the x back into the equation to get y. So y equals minus 3. Brackets. Good. Okay, so 1 squared is... One. one. Three times or minus three times one is minus three. Good. Minus three plus six is three. Three plus one is four. Correct. Okay, so now you can tell me what the vertex is. Now we've got both. So what is the vertex? Vertex equals one. Correct. There we go. Alright, so now look at this graph. Because it's, it's here, it's on the diagonal. They drew it for you. Do you see this point mm -hmm. as being the vertex? Yes, because there's the graph, there's the point. Okay, what are the coordinates of this point? One and four, and four exactly. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right, there we go. Um, okay, it's just discussion points. Domain and range. Can you tell me what the domain is for this question? Um, 22, no, uh, minus 4 and a half to infinity. Yes. Can you tell me what the range is? Um, is it infinity to infinity? No, the range wouldn't be infinity to infinity. Range is the possible answers for y. So, isn't it a minus 4? No, minus 4, no, 2, infinity. Uh, no, the, the y starts there. Okay. Okay, so the y values can be anything up there. Okay. Okay, the x values are what you just said. There, going that way. Okay, so range would be what? Minus 2 to infinity. Minus 2 to infinity, exactly. Okay, domain would have been? Uh, minus four and a half or minus five, whatever that point's value is, to infinity. Does that make sense? Okay, good. All right, so that covers that. Yeah, so we've kept domain and range. Um, okay, the textbook's actually quite good because they talk about this whole idea of um, different types of functions, like what we just spoke about. See, yeah. quadratic and straight line. Okay, so quadratic is curved, happy or sad, straight line. Obviously, one line either sloping up or down. Um, okay, this is important just from a domain point of view. Um, if you have equations that have denominators, can a denominator equal zero? Pardon? If you have equations like that where you have a denominator that has a value, an unknown, can you have a denominator of zero? Okay, if you divide anything by zero, what do you get? Zero. No. no. Um, Undefined. So that you can do in your calculator. If you take a number, choose a number, 10, 20, 30, whatever, and divide by zero, what do you get? Zero. Or error. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next page. We need to look for things like that when we draw functions. Okay, so just a note, when calculating the domain and range, actually, it applies to both. Undefined answers cannot exist. Okay, we cannot have undefined answers. That's why you can't have divide by zero. Yeah, it applies to both. Um, so, when finding domain and range, we cannot have undefined answers. That's what that's important. So things like dividing by zero cannot have. Things like square rooting a negative, you cannot have. Okay, those are things that you can't have. Does that make sense? Okay, so number one, a denominator that's zero will give a undefined answer. Cannot have it. That's the first one. A denominator that's zero gives an undefined answer. Okay. 
Okay, underneath I just put an example, e.g. I'm going to give you a simple example and it will give a more difficult one. Okay, so example 1 over x. Uh, actually, let's write down y equals 1 over x. Just put a y in front, y equals 1 over x. Okay, so my question is, um, give me the domain for x. Okay. What is the domain for x? I don't know how you figure it. Positive or negative infinity, do you agree? Because what did we say x can be? x can be positive or negative, but x cannot be what value? Yeah. A zero. Because what is x in that equation? A denominator. Can you have a denominator of zero? No. no. Can I have a denominator of any other number other than zero? Yes. Okay, so you, next to that, just write down, the domain is positive and negative infinity. Infinity that, that sideways eight. Mm -hmm. Okay? Domain, the domain, domain is plus or minus infinity except for zero. Okay. Okay, and they normally write it like this. So um, they would write x cannot equal zero. Okay, so like like a, a equals with a dash through it. I don't know if you've seen that before. Perfect. Okay, so what does that mean? That means the domain can be anything you want it to be. It just can never be zero. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. One more example to, um, highlighting this point. Uh, y equals, example 2, another example, y equals 1 over x plus 3. Okay, that's the, the formula, that's the function. Okay, so if that's the function, can I have a domain where I have a um, denominator at 0? No, I can't. Okay, so what is the denominator in this example? X plus 3. Good. So can x plus 3 equal 0? No, it can't. So let's write that down. x plus 3 cannot equal 0. So that, that equal sign with the dash through it. x plus 3 cannot equal 0. Okay, so solve the equation. What can x not equal? 0. No, take the 3 across. What do you mean? Uh, it's, a, it's the equation, right? Yeah. x plus 3 equals 0. Well, not equal 0. So, solve for x. No. So, x... Okay, so... So, x... Yeah. ...cannot equal... ...what number? Zero. No, take, take the minus 3 across. Oh, we solve in this equation. Yes. Okay, so that goes and that becomes a... There we go. So, can you have x as minus 3? Can we have x as minus 3? No. Why not? Because if, because if x is minus 3, what does the denominator give you? Minus 3. Minus 3 plus 3. What is minus 3 plus 3? 0. Exactly. Can you have zeros? No. no. Okay, so you had to solve for what? The value of x. Okay, so in this equation, what can x never be? Zero. Why? Because 1 divided by 0 is undefined. Okay, in this equation, what can x never be? Minus 3. Why? Because minus 3 plus 3 gives you 0, mm -hmm. and I can never have that. Okay, because the denominator must always be positive. Okay, so it doesn't matter what the denominator is. No, you use the denominator to find what you can't have, for x, if you have a denominator. But if you don't have a denominator, then it wouldn't apply. It only applies when you have a denominator, because we know you can't have numbers divided by zero. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right, good. So that covers that bit. That was the discussion about the domain. And then it talk about inverses. Okay, an inverse is obviously the opposite. It's, the, it's that swapping things around. Okay, so this would be a separate consideration. So we've covered the domain stuff now. You can leave that. Um, you can make, put a new heading if you want to. Just call it inverses. Functions can have inverses.
Got that. Okay. All right. So what happens with an inverse? X becomes Y, Y becomes X. Okay. It's like swapping things around. That, that's the simple way of explaining it. Okay, I'm going to use this one as an example because it's, it's good because they give you a denominator as well. So at least you can practice that. Okay, yeah, so it's kind of like swapping things around. Good. Okay, so um, let's write down the function. So f of x equals f bracket x equals. That's the function. Um, 3 in the numerator and then denominator so over 2x minus 1. Okay, that's the question. Right, and then the instructions are find f to the minus 1. So this notation, that notation is referring to this, the inverse. Does that make sense? Okay, so just put the instruction next to that. Find, find f minus 1x. Like that, exactly like they've given to you there. Okay. Right, so we're discussing what a inverse is, and we're using this as an example. Okay. Right, good. So if I'm finding f minus 1x. That means I must find the inverse. That means I must swap things around. Okay, so I'm going to read what they've given you in terms of steps, but you don't have to follow these steps. You just have to make sure that x becomes y and y becomes x. That's basically what you're doing. Okay, so they've given you two or three steps in this case. They said write the rule in terms of x and y, which is the question. Okay, y equals 3 over 2x minus y. Do you agree that the f of x can be represented with a y? Okay, step two is to rearrange to make x the subject, and then step three is to replace the y's with x's. Okay, why? You're swapping everything around. Okay, so if I have to swap things around, what am I going to do? I'm going to have x equals 3 over 2y minus 1. Do you agree? X equals... If, you, if you're looking for the index, you're going to make y x and you're going to make x y. Yeah. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. So what is f of x representing? A y. What is it going to be if it's going to be an inverse? It will be an x. Okay. Yes. Equals two, two x minus uh, uh, no, 3 over 2y minus 1. Do you agree? So you only change the... X yes, but now you need to make y the subject of the equation. Do you agree? Yeah. Because y is always the dependent variable. Okay, so x is going to be the independent variable. So that's why you have the equations y plus mx plus, uh, mx plus c or ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, those, those general equations. Okay, so now here we've got x the subject, which isn't what we want. We want y the subject. Do you agree? Okay, so let's get everything... Uh, looking a bit better. Right, so we want the 2y minus 1 to go on which side? On the left. Okay, so if it goes on the left, it's going to be times. Do you agree? Right, so on the next line, you would show, um, maybe I should show this to you. Um, can, I, can you give me one separate page there from your exam pad? Just so I can show you, because you're writing notes, I don't want to, okay, so like this, okay, so what do we have, x equals 3 over 2y minus 1, do you agree, okay, so now, okay, um, maybe as practice, can you make y the subject of the equation, what would you do, I, I just want to see your arithmetic, Yeah, so make y the subject of the equation. Just try. Don't worry if you get it wrong. It's, it's, there's nothing wrong with getting things wrong because we need to practice to get things right. That's how it works, okay, with maths. Okay, so don't be afraid to try. Yeah, it's on the spot. I'm just wondering if I'm just going to do it. 
Yeah, no, okay, be, be careful. You can't do that because remember, yeah, this whole thing is one term. Okay, so if this whole thing is one term, it needs to go together. All right, so if I write this again, this is together. So if I want this to go that side and I want this to go that side, that's what I'm doing. Okay, this is divide on the right, so it's going to be times on the left. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. This is times on the left, so it must be divide on the right. That's what you had to do. Okay, now what am I going to do? I want y on its own, right? Yeah. So this you can ignore. Okay, so how does plus 1 disappear? What do you do? Take it across. Good. Okay, so then this will be 2y equals 3 over x plus 1. Does that make sense? Okay, when you have plus 1, you need a common denominator. Do you agree? Okay, so what is what, is, what am I going to have? 2y equals... X. I'm going to have a 3 here, and I'm going to have a plus. How do I get 1? X over X. Do you agree? Hmm? Okay, so now what do I have? I've got a... Because how do I get 1? Common denominator. 3X plus 1. How, do, how are you going to simplify that? What's the common denominator? X. So does this have an X? Yes. Does this have an X? No. Okay. All right. So now, what do I do here? I want to get rid of the two. How do I get rid of the two? Divide by two. Exactly. Divide by two, then divide by two. So that'll be there. Okay. So the answer here: y equals x plus three or three plus x. It doesn't matter how you write it. Over two x. Okay. And that's what they gave you here: three plus x over two x. There's the inverse. All right. So um, this needs to be written on your page. Okay, so that's what we're doing. This is the inverse. So now you can say, instead of writing y, you could have written this, f minus one of x, which is the same as the inverse of y. Okay. So that gives you the inverse. Okay, so the inverse for that function that you had earlier is that answer there. Okay. All right, so we've covered that. Um, let's see if there's anything else here. Okay, transforming graphs. Um, this is something that you've seen before in terms of the reflection. Can you remember when you reflect things? You reflect things um, along the x or the y, depending on your like that mirror thing. Okay, so let's write a note about that. Um, and then that covers that, and then coordinate geometry, that's something separate, okay. Alright, so the last note here for this section, transforming graphs, that's the heading.
Okay, so we're looking at transforming a graph. Transform means to change it, do you agree? Okay, so you get different ways of changing a graph. Um, you can reflect it, and if you reflect a graph, you're going to be replacing either the x or the y, depending. So, for example, let me just show you a sketch. If this is the graph, and I've got a graph that looks like that, okay, which is a straight line. So that's y, that's x. Right, so that's the graph. Okay, can I reflect this graph? I can. If I make Y the mirror, so if this is the mirror, what would the reflection look like? It would be like that, right? Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Okay, because that's the mirror, so then it's like that. Okay, if, if this is the graph, okay, and I want to make this the mirror, Exactly, it'll be that. Does that make sense? Okay, so that, that's a reflection. So see, with the reflection on the x-axis, replace y with minus y. Reflection on the y-axis, replace x with minus x. See, they're telling you how to reflect if you're looking at the x or the y-axis. So this or that as being the mirror. Okay, so there's the points. Right, so point number one, reflecting, or let's maybe just write down write it down as is, that bit, just this bit. Okay, so if I reflect using the x-axis, y becomes minus y. If I reflect using the y-axis, x becomes minus x. Okay, it's just that concept, it's trying to think about the, the numbers, okay, because you, you've got the mirror. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by it just now, once you write, once you write it down, okay. Right, so that's a kid reflection. Okay, stretching is slightly different because there they're looking at a factor. Okay, so you're making things bigger or you're making things smaller. Right, so obviously, depending on what you've got in the question, you're either going to make the graph bigger or smaller. So, for example, let me show you this. Uh, let's sketch one. Okay, so that's the y, that's the x. Okay, so if I have a graph that looks like this, Right? I can stretch it and make it bigger by making it look like that. Does, does, does that make sense? Okay, so stretching is just making the graph bigger. It's expanding everything. So this has an equation. Right, This graph looks maybe twice the size, so you would multiply everything by 2 okay, to get a bigger graph. That's all it is. Right, so it's just timesing it by a factor. See, stretching it by a factor, 1 over k or 1 over k times y, depending on what you're doing. Are you making it smaller or bigger? Okay, stretching. All right, so that's just something to consider. That I haven't really seen much. Uh, I don't know if they'll actually test that. It's just something that they've given you in terms of theory. You can stretch a graph, um, but I don't think that's so important because stretching is just doing this. It's changing what something looks like. Uh, reflecting will probably come up because that is more popular. All right, let's see if there's anything here. Curve. Um, okay, well, curves. This is actually quite a nice summary if you look at what they've given you here. Okay, are these curves? Not all of them. What is this? Straight line. This? Straight line. That's a curve. Happy or sad? Happy. So you've got an equation. What, what equation do we have for this? Um, y equals. Um, it's the quadratic yeah, equation. Yeah. Good. Plus? Plus, plus C. Nice. Okay, so that's the equation for that graph. 
and that graph is positive, so A is positive. Okay, these are funny looking graphs. Why? Because they're either like this, exponential, so x squared, uh, x cubed. Here you've got inverse, so 1 over x. Okay, here you've got 1 over x squared. Right, so these are like log type graphs or exponential graphs. Okay, remember, how do we draw graphs? Exactly. So you find y's having substituted x's. Okay, it's so just last note at the bottom. Does that write about the stretching? Or just about the no, you don't have to worry about the stretching. The stretching is just increasing the numbers or decreasing the numbers, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, but this is quite important. So if I'm looking at graphs, you can just say sketching graphs. As a heading. Just as a heading, yeah. And then just one subheading. It doesn't matter what the graph looks like. So the point I'm trying to make here is that you see fancy graphs. I mean, this is a very fancy graph. Have a look at this one. This one has one curve there, and then it slopes down, and then it starts to curve up. See, see that? That's a really, like, like a roller coaster graph, in a way. Okay, because it's got lots of exponents and numbers, variables. Right, so the thing is, you just need to find x and substitute y. So when sketching a graph, what you need is this. You need coordinates. Okay, what are coordinates? x and y. These are coordinates. Right, so whatever the graph is, if I have 1 and 2 here, and 0 and 3 here, those are all coordinates. If I have an x and I have a y, do I have a point? Yes. 1 and 2, 1 and 2, somewhere there. 0 and 3, 0 and 3, somewhere there. Okay, and then if I just join the dots, I get a graph. Okay, so that's the point I'm trying to make there. So sketching graph, you can just say, um, irrespective of the formula so it doesn't matter when I say irrespective I'm, I'm saying it can be quadratic it can be straight line it can be even like weird and wonderful in terms of all these pictures the, the basic principle stays the same find X's and Y's and plot points that's the key right you can draw any one of these graphs if you just know what the equation is, that's so all. Find x's and y's. And y's and plot the points. Okay, is that alright? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, so we've covered that section. See, that section is complete. Now we need to practice. Okay, so I've circled the ones that I want you to do for homework. So you can try do some of these. They're quite basic. Um, I have given you one longer question just to see your drawing skills. Okay, would you be able to take like this, take an equation, whatever the equation is here, and then would you be able to draw it? So it's just substitute x's and y's. Okay, so um, that's what I'm giving you. I've circled them, um, but I'll, you know, what I want to try to do because of the maths, uh, it's, it's difficult to keep track because then I forget what I gave you or not. So I'm going to, yeah. like, just. Just write down page whatever, exercise whatever, and then just send it on the WhatsApp group. Okay. That, that'll be easy for you and me. Okay. So at least then I know what I've given you, and then I know what to check. Okay. Because sometimes I also forget what I've given you in terms of exercises. Um, either or it doesn't matter. I just thought that would work, because okay. at least then I also have that as a reference. I can just check, okay, I gave you this, this, and this. Let's check. Did we do it? How did you do if it's simple, a lot of this is quite easy to do. Um, like, see, domains we spoke about today. There's a question about domains. Then here's just functions. Can you work out values? Yeah. Um, and then one question here is about the drawing, the sketching. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that covers that bit. That's that one section done. Um, see, we've covered that. Now we're changing section. Okay, do you want to take a quick little breather? Yeah, yeah let's take a quick breather. Let me send the So you're going to do that on the... Okay. okay, I think it'll be easier because at least then I can also keep track. Okay.